Hello everybody, my name is Jimmy Smith and welcome to another great varieties on Barbera, the wonderful Piemontese Italian variety Barbera. Uh, this is our advanced version, so this is our in-depth look at the grape variety covering history, viticulture, vinification, geology, geography, uh, and also what it's like as a style. Um, we do have a simpler version if you are studying your WSET level two, that's our intermediate version. But this session is ideal for those you're studying level three, level four, and equivalent around the world. If you are studying your WSET level three, there is more information that you need to know here, but it gives you a very firm understanding of the grape variety. Okay, so as mentioned, my name is Jimmy Smith. I am uh, at Wine with Jimmy on Twitter and on Instagram. I am the owner and founder of West London Wine School in Fulham, London, United Kingdom, and also South London Wine School in Greenwich and Streatham, London, United Kingdom. Also got a wine bar called Streatham Wine House, of course, in uh, the town of the same name in South London, in Streatham. So please come and see us if you're in London next for a class or a glass. So let's talk a little bit about this wonderful variety, Barbera. Um, so you are required for level three and above to know a fair bit about this variety. Barbera as a variety has some quite unknown origins. We're not exactly sure where it comes from. Um, we think because of the amount we find today in Piemonte, we think it's from that area around the areas like Monferrato, the Monferrato Hills. Um, so this is in the areas that are around Asti uh, towards Alessandria. Uh, so all of these kind of quite, uh, quite famous areas in sort of southern central Piemonte. Um, so that's what we think about it, uh, where it comes from. But there has been lots of other hypotheses as well. We have uh, the Lombards. Uh, so this is now the, the region next door to it lends its name, its etymology to the Lombards, Lombardia, which where we find Milan as the kind of uh, uh, sort of capital city of the north, the fashion capital. Um, it was thought that the variety was brought in by the Lombards and the Lombards coming through from sort of uh, central, uh, central Europe. So maybe this variety was introduced, maybe they introduced it from their connections towards the east. Um, but uh, we know that's not true. Um, we know that it's not true because the, the, um, the diversity here is not great. There is not a huge amount of diversity. So it's more than likely that this Barbera variety was a natural cross created in Piemonte, but quite recent. And our mentions of this variety, our first actual record, um, we have it mentioned as Ugetta, which is a synonym for Barbera, near Vercelli. And Vercelli is up towards uh, what we call the Alto Piemonte, the upper Piemonte. So that's going up towards the Val d'Aosta in the northern Piemonte. And then also called Vespolina in Novara. So these are the Vercelli and Novara hills. So this is the same area again. Uh, interestingly, today, Ugetta and Vespolina are completely distinct varieties, different to Barbera. But it was thought that these were synonyms used for Barbera uh, back in the late 18th century. Um, so really, Barbera's claim and its fame comes after Phylloxera. Um, so mentioned in small amounts in texts around uh, Novara and Vercelli, but then Phylloxera comes through and then it's replanted um, quite a lot due to its uh, easier conditions of plantation uh, and its character that it gives, its ability to uh, produce wines that are imminently more drinkable than uh, Nebbiolo locally. So quite a recent expansion throughout the area. So we're only really talking 100 and sort of uh, 130 years or so of real prominence of, of Barbera. Um, now, the reason why there's a bit of uh, conjecture whether we think it is properly Piemontese is that there is very little, if any, genetic kinship to the likes of things like Nebbiolo or Dolcetto or Frieza, Grignolino, etc from Piemonte. Uh, so it is a grape which you know people have claimed has come from far afield. As we've mentioned already, it could come from somewhere in Eastern countries. Uh, it's been mentioned to come from places all far towards the Middle, middle Eastern zones. So it's an interesting one, which we're still researching to this day. 
Um, there is a Barbera Bianca variety. It is not related. And there's also Barbera found in Campania down in the south in the, uh, in the district, the region of Sanio. Uh, but it is genetically distinct and different. So it is not the same thing. Another reason why Barbera. So Barbera, yes, has uh, sort of come into play in the, after Phylloxera. But it hasn't really grabbed the attention as much as some other varieties. And in fact, it's given up its place in the Italian growing charts to Montepulciano, which is a grape from the south and the central parts of Italy. Why? Well, there was a bit of a scandal in 1985 with producers adding methanol. And I believe people lost their lives as a result of this. So, so therefore, the um, the connection that Barbera, I mean, it's not Barbera's fault, it is the producer's fault, but the fact that this wine was connected to this scandal where death occurred, um, Barbera therefore, of course, struggled uh, and has struggled. And it's a little bit like the dilethine glycol, glycol, the antifreeze scandal for Gruner Veltliner. It is only really recently that people have shook off that 1985 scandal has gone. 1985 wasn't a good year. Uh, it was a good year for scandals. Um, so, you know, lots of issues uh, around that. Uh, so Barbera is rebuilding its um, its importance and its and its kind of um, respect in the wine world uh, uh, in over the last sort of 10, 20 years. Barbera in the vineyard um, is often in Piemonte, uh, really only found in what we call maybe the second best sites. So not on the sunniest slopes, uh, the sorry uh, slopes that you find Nebbiolo in the Lange area. In the Lange, Nebbiolo gets the best, Barbera gets the second best. So it, the Barbera d'Alba, which is made here, can be great, of course, no worries, it can be great, but often it's not going to be its best expression due to the fact that Nebbiolo is found on the best sites. But there are places where Barbera is found on its best sites, certainly around the places like Asti, for instance, which we're gonna have a look at later. Um, it is quite late ripening. It ripens after Dolcetto, uh, but just before Nebbiolo. Sometimes, though, Barbera can be picked around the same time as Nebbiolo, and I've heard of it actually sometimes being picked just a bit later. So it's quite a late ripening variety, and those certainly later ripened styles will gain intensity. They are able to be picked quite late due to the natural acids, which are very high, which means they can be left on the vine a little bit longer. Um, now, Nebbiolo is known as the grape of kings, the king of grapes, the aristocratical grape variety. Fine. Barbera, though, is known as the people's grape or the farmer's grape. There's more of it. It gives you a bigger crop. It's more consistent and more people drink it. So it's the grape of the people. So that's great. Um, it really is a, a nice productive style and it can be a bit overproductive, in fact. So you often have to adapt your viticultural techniques to reduce that. Uh, and that is by pruning. So quite careful harvesting, quite careful green harvesting and canopy management, uh, but also restricting the amount of buds matching the vines of vigor to the amount of buds. So pruning is very important. Also, the soil, if you want to restrict its yields, the sandy soil, certainly around Asti, uh, so the, uh, uh, the Asti sands, as they're called, can curb the production, uh, so can limit it, uh, often therefore producing much higher quality. But it is often found on calcareous limestoney soils and some clay, some argile based clays uh, as well, where they can be even brighter in their acidities. And of course, it is a grape that, as mentioned already, it retains acid well into its late ripening phase. So acids are what winemakers in historical Barbera have had to compete with. Uh, and that leads us into our next little part. Um, Barbera is often today a single varietal as we have got better at viticulturally producing it, so understanding how to balance out the acidities in the vineyard. But traditionally, though, it wasn't. Traditionally, it was uh, often harvested uh, with very high souring acids and then balanced and blended, uh, sorry, uh, blended for balance with varieties like 
Grignolino, which is actually quite a sappy variety itself, Dolcetto, Friese, genetically close to Nebbiolo. Uh, and over in Lombardia, in the Old Trepo Pavese, we have Croatina, where it's often been blended with to sort of um, curb its souring acidities. Um, so we're talking about normally lead by acids, but there are, of course, winemakers often led by famous names like Gaia, for instance, and Bruno Giacosa, uh, who produce very powerful expressions of, uh, of the wine. So this will be from lower yielding sites, smaller production, complex grapes that come into the winery with then quite a bit of extraction techniques to give tannin, give more color, more depth, uh, things like remontage, pigeage, and of course, oak, with increasing amounts of new oak and increasing amounts of barrique, small barrels, like the French method, for instance. Um, and there we go, since the 1970s, people like Gaia, of course, introducing these styles, um, you know, uh, um, the, the traditional type of wood that is used is from Slavonia in Croatia with these large botti, so these large, large um, vats, really, these casks, but the movement has been to produce them in these um, French barrels, which gives you these uh, more, more oakier complexities. There's more of that polished note to the wine. And these become the more premium examples of Barbera. Um, but, you know, the, the traditional way with Croatian Slavonian oak uh, is by more neutral oak, but long extensive agings, so this is oxidative aging, letting the oxygen get to the wine to break down the polyphenols and including those tannins. Uh, it also helps to re uh, sort of curb its reductive notes as well, which can be a little bit violety uh, with Barbeda in their youth. Um, you can do this at home if you are drinking a Barbeda and it seems a bit sort of violety, maybe a little bit sulfury in there as well. You just need to let it breathe. So stick it in a jug or a large glass or a decanter. Cool. The Barbera key locations, the number of Barbera produced has been diminishing. Uh, the number, the most recent number I found was 18,000 hectares. This is lower than what Jancis Robinson's wine grapes would say, but that was from, I think, the 2000 census. So uh, in the last 20 years, it has dropped in its production, but 18,000 hectares today. Some key areas. So around Asti, so around the city of Asti, and let me just pinpoint this out for you. Uh, so I, I'll draw a little bit here. Let's use uh, this, let's make this a bit bigger. So here is Asti, just here, okay? Here's Alessandria, just off the map. And here is Torino, the city, the capital city of Piemonte. So really Asti is the focus. By the way, Alba would just be off down here on this map, a little bit more further than this, but I don't want to go onto the other map. Um, so of course, this is around the, the area of Asti. So what we'll find is normally of Asti is attached to the grape variety. And this is exactly what you've got on the left. So here we have Barbera, of Asti, and this is a DOCG of which there is a Superiore as well, which is even higher quality with stricter aging length. Um, then here uh, in this southern area of this bit is a place called Nizza. This is what I've put here, a newer DOCG, but widely accepted today is probably the best of Barbera, making very complex and long lived examples. Um, we then also have the larger area of Barbera de Monferrato, which is the hills, that's a DOC. Um, we also got on the bottom map here around Alba. So this is not known as the best area. Really, Nizza and Barbera d'Asti are. But Barbera d'Alba does still make some very good examples. But they are often, remember, competing with Nebbiolo for the best sites. Um, so Barbera d'Alba, as this map can show you, I'm actually going to draw the River Tenaro, which runs through the middle here. There we go. That actually comes from the Maritime Alps and then empties into the Po. Actually splits that area into the Ruero of the north. That's it, this bit up here. And then the Lange of the south. Barbera d'Alba can come from the whole of this area. 
Um, so uh, often you'll find some of the better ones actually in the northern part of it. So Babara d'Alba. Then we have Otrepo Povesi, which is over in southern Lombardia, which borders Emilia Romana, which borders quite close to Gutornio, which was, is within Emilia Romana. And these are both DOCs that have Barbera that are often blended with things like Croatina. California has a bit of it, 7,000 hectares, which is quite a lot, quite substantial. So they're quite proud of their bar bar Barbera from the immigrants, the Italian immigrants that moved across in this, uh, in this area. So they are your key locations. What is Barbera like? So as it shows here, uh, a very principal character is the cherry. Due to the high acid, you'll find a souring cherry note. Um, strawberries can be found in the slightly younger unoaked expressions, as can red plum. In the more complex oaky expressions, which are more powerful from some of the best sites, blackberry will be found. Vanilla, often if the wine has been oaked, oakiness in the background, and violet on the younger styles. So they can be quite fruity, quite floral, but with some oaky spice characteristics as well. The acidities will tend to be on the higher side of life, as we know, uh, so that's quite important. So very high acidities behind them, um, normally across the board, uh, and th unless it's been blended with something, you might find it a bit softer. And then low to, to medium tannins. Now, most of the inexpensive, drinkable Barberas from, say, Barbera d'Asti, Barbera d'Alba, uh, Barbera Monferrato, will tend to be low tannins, you know, juicy, low, without that oak influence. But from places like Nizza, places like Barbera d'Alba best sites, Barbera d'Asti Superiore, you will find that the tannins are more medium, even high in some instances, certainly with the oak, and that gives the wine power and structure. Um, so alcohols are variable. I find them sort of medium to high normally, and the bodies, of course, are variable from sort of normally low to full. Uh, so it's quite uh, it's quite variable. Great. So that is our Barbera variety. So um, once again, I've been Jimmy Smith. I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation on the Piemontese grape variety called Barbera. Uh, my personal Twitter and Instagram is at Wine with Jimmy. Uh, wine School is West London Wine. South London Wine for the other wine school and Stretton Wine House for our bar. If you're in London, come and see us for a class or a glass. It would be lovely to meet up with you. I hope you've learned something. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you very much.